One thing that is very clear from the New Hampshire primary, that a block of independents and Republicans who are not fans of Donald Trump, they're up for grabs. So, Tim, I turn to you first. Most likely, we are looking at Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. They're both incumbents. Americans know what they are getting with both of these men. So what exactly is up for grabs with these voters? They know who these guys are. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I, I think primaries are, are like Rorschach tests. I, I think they're, they can be indicative of some things, but they're not predictive. And I think, you know, it's the motivated voters on both sides of the aisle who participate the most in polls and come out in primaries. And I think this is going to be a very short primary season, as we all know now, and a very long general election. And I think the, I think the fact that independent voters not only came out in the way they did for Nikki Haley, but also were so strong about what they didn't like about Donald Trump is something that should, should just be jangling around in the back of his reptilian brain, that, that this is going to play in the general election in an important way in swing states, and it could end up being the decisive factor. But he never pivots. Philip, from the first time we saw Donald Trump until now, mm -hmm. he speaks to one group and one group only, his base. Right. And he has the same refrain over and over, it's all about grievances. Right. That obviously worked for him tremendously well in this primary and the last two. Right. But then we're going to turn to the general. And just like in the last presidential elections and the last several midterms, it doesn't work there. So what's the strategy? Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't work as well. I mean, you're exactly right. That's how Donald Trump operates. I, I, the only thing I would say to sort of nuance that is that he, he says the things to the base, but then the base thing says things back to him. And so he does actually evolve. His methodology doesn't. He's always just trying to pander to those people, and he does so successfully in part because he takes their, their, their feedback. What we saw after he won the primary in 2016 is we saw him not really moderate on any of that stuff, right? He never moderated over the course of his presidency, and he continues to believe he doesn't need to moderate. Part of this fantasy that he's developed for himself about having won 2020 is a reinforcement of the idea he doesn't need to change Hold on. anything. He knows he didn't win 2020. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. understand that, right? I mean, I, I do think there's sort of a part of him that sort of likes to explore the idea sure, that maybe. It's part of the right? show. But, but he also <laughs> thinks sincerely that he almost got to be president again despite not changing anything, right? I, I don't see, I mean, he, he, he says, things like, oh, we'll have to see what we do on abortion and stuff like that. This is obviously fake given, you know, what he did as president. But I really do think that he thinks he can just keep plowing ahead and doing being exactly who he's always been, even though he has twice lost the popular vote in the general. Well, and look, one of the things that happened was he convinced at least half of the Republican yep. voters that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president, that, right. that Donald Trump won uh, the election in 2020. He loves that idea that he can just say something and that people will come believe to it. believe it, right? And I was on a call with the campaign staff just a few days ago for Joe Biden. They are counting on those moderate yeah. voters, there, some of whom got Donald Trump elected in 2016, who may be exhausted the same way that suburban women were exhausted in 2020. Uh, union workers who backed him in 2016 help him win some unexpected old Rust Belt states. Now you've got the UAW coming out this week and, you know, saying here's all the things that Donald Trump has done for the labor movement. And it's a blank screen. Mm -hmm. And Joe Biden literally stood with us. Why do you think Nikki Haley's staying in the race? I think Nikki Haley is staying in the race because, one, she wants to be the backup option. Like, she knows that there, there could be... A twist of fate happens, what I believe on primary night anchors were calling the rapture moment, where suddenly Donald Trump is off off the map. He is no longer qualified because of the Supreme Court. He is in prison. Whatever reason, she wants to, wants, if that does happen, to be the peop one that people look at and go, okay, well, close enough. We can support Nikki Haley. I also think that there is part of her, like, I don't want to, like, delve too much into motives in terms of, like, maybe she wants another cab position, maybe she wants a, the vice presidency. I feel like that might be true of some of the other now former candidates who ran. You mean, like, like, uh, like uh, Tim, Tim Scott, Scott? Scott? Yes. literally <laughs> said, because I love you? Could it be him? Is that what maybe. you're talking about? Yes, absolutely. Like, I, I do appreciate that Nikki Haley is sticking it out, that she is trying to actually very slowly push back on Donald Trump. In the last couple of days of the uh, New Hampshire primary, she was actually being forceful and talking about why Trump is not a good candidate. Why but it's Trump way too late. Win. It's super too late That's for true. it. Like, this is something she should have been doing months ago, what all of them should have been doing since 
2022 instead of this song and dance like, oh, yeah, he was great for his time, but now we got to move on. I suppose you know he's just bad. But, Tim, it may be too late for her ultimately, but if she stays in the race for the next month or two, she could bruise him. Even look at how he's conducting himself in the last two or three days, going after her, flanked by all these other guys. America has And the way she seen, drew him out. The way she drew him out. But this is my point. America, a lot of people have forgotten how Donald Trump conducts himself. And she can draw him out so he reveals himself again in that twisted, mean-spirited way that will hurt him with those suburban voters. Well, getting under Donald Trump's skin is a win for Joe Biden That's if he's got her doing it. For yes, him. totally. This is great for the Bidens because she is somebody who suddenly has found her mojo, right? She is going out <laughs> on stages and she is just going after him. She sounded a little bit after losing mm -hmm. New Hampshire. Stronger like than ever. <laughs> right. How many candidates have fallen by the wayside because they couldn't take it that Donald Trump had a nasty nickname for them? She just has Marco gone to the Rubio. point where she seems not to care. Well, yeah. one of many. Yeah, and the fact that many. she called out that Donald Trump is now the establishment candidate. Yeah. And that which she is, is correct. Is, which is correct. Right. Like, everyone is lining up behind him. She is the one who's running as more of an outsider. And the fact that she is trying to exploit that, I think, is part is clever. And it's and, interesting how it plays out. And that she's going after his mental acuity, and, right. and, you know, which has been the card But he's Trump. giving it to her. But, right? he is, like, but that's he's also the card it. that the Trump team's been trying to lay on Biden. Okay, but confusing so her for Nancy Pelosi, See, I, I mean, Nikki Haley's not Bizarre. going after Trump. He served that up on a platter. Totally. She's like, yo, see what he said, like, <laughs> yesterday? Yeah, but Donald